Hello mortals. From building rockets to analyzing the behavior of chihuahuas under the influence of psychedelics. On Wikipedia, science is defined as <clears throat> a systematic endeavor that builds and organizes knowledge. knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the Boring. Let's go with the definition from a more entertaining source. Myself. Thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. Science is the continuous process of finding out new stuff by making discoveries or by building hypotheses and testing them. This process is called the scientific method, where you start with an observation or question, research what's known so far in the topic area, build a hypothesis, test it with experiments, analyze the results and build conclusions. If science tells you that the retrograde of Jupiter through the rings of Uranus will give you tummy pains today, without providing any valid reasoning, then that's not science, that's my aunt, after her daily horoscope. There are many ways to group the science fields into cohesive branches, but it all boils down to classifying the same stuff into near-identical structures. A good choice would be to classify the fields into formal, natural, and social sciences, run through their foundations, and how they get to be applied in the real world. Formal science is when a bunch of formal scientists concern themselves with things that don't exist, but still end up being helpful. Disciplines that describe abstract things like imaginary numbers or the Morbius strip are the result of people having too much time not hunting animals or gathering berries. There are several main disciplines in formal science that can branch further, and are, in some way or another, a modified version of mathematics. Logic is the study of correct reasoning. There is formal logic, which uses mathematical reasoning to establish foundations for maths, by using very basic things like variables, quantifiers, and connectives to build complex mathematical proofs. A good example of that is the book Principia Mathematica, which contains many definitions and proofs, one of them showing that 1 plus 1 is, indeed, equal to 2, in 360 pages. It's very difficult to work with formal logic, but at least you are 100% sure that you are right. Informal logic, on the other hand, is just people arguing. Another formal science is mathematics, which is the logical next step from formal logic. Maths is plural because there are many of them, arithmetic and number theory concern themselves with numbers, algebra is about formulas and abstract structures, geometry studies funny shapes and the spaces they inhabit, and calculus concerns itself with making STEM majors cry themselves to sleep, aside from studying quantities and the way they change. There is also data science that extracts insights from noisy data structures, and statistics that organize, analyze, and present that data. And finally, there is computer science, which is just math solving itself inside magic electricity stones, using data structures and algorithms. What sets formal science aside from other disciplines like physics and biology is that they don't start with the outside world, they are purely abstract. The other sciences are empirical however. This means that the knowledge and justification from this field come only or primarily from sensory experience. That is, you have to base your statements on the observations you have made. Naturally, this puts empirical sciences below formal science, because even after trillions of observations that prove a statement, you can never be 100% sure that the statement is objectively correct and that there will never be another observation that will dispute its correctness. Meanwhile, in math, the laws are absolutely certain and indisputable, mostly because people just made them up. But then you have 1 plus 2 plus 3, to infinity equal minus 1 over 12, which you won't ever observe in nature, so there's that. The empirical sciences can be further divided into natural and social sciences. As the name implies, natural sciences are concerned with the description, understanding, and prediction of natural phenomena. The most epic one is, of course, physics, which embodies the study of the fundamental constitutes of the universe together with the forces and interactions inside of it. There is classical physics, the most boring one because it actually makes sense and describes classical mechanics, acoustics, optics, thermodynamics, and electromagnetism. The funky modern physics started at the beginning of the 20th century, and it is most concerned with the behavior of matter and energy under extreme conditions or on a very large or very small scale, relativity, quantum mechanics, shoving giant donuts under Switzerland, and half-dead cats. Then there is chemistry, the scientific study of matter at the atomic and molecular scale. Chemistry also deals with how these atoms are arranged, such as gases, crystals, or metals. This discipline is often called the central science, 
as it provides the foundation for understanding other applied scientific disciplines. If you use chemistry to understand the earth and the rocks, you got geology, for medications you have pharmacology, for the soil of the moon, you have cosmochemistry and for understanding how pollutants affect our environment, you got ecology. The latter draws more and more attention from the scientific community and media, as the world around us is constantly changing. One major factor driving climate change is the greenhouse effect caused by the abundance of CO2 humans emit into the atmosphere. Do you feel it? Right on your skin. It is getting hot in here. In the last decade alone, the average temperature has risen by 0.24 degrees Celsius, this year being hotter by more than 1 degree Celsius compared to the pre-industrial era, which is alarming. It is a problem that you can't just hide from or ignore, as it's literally around you. If you want to make an impact and do it efficiently, REN is here to help you, as it is a simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. On their website, you can calculate how many tons of CO2 you, your household, or your business, emits in one year, taking into account the means of transportation you use, the kind of food you eat, and how much money you spend on things like clothes and services. It then puts into perspective your emissions using diagrams and intuitive comparisons. My second admin's emissions are the equivalent of nine trees cut down per year or eight flights from Paris to LA. Bad admin. If we all were like you, the earth would be warmer by 1.5 degrees Celsius in less than 10 years. Thankfully, he can redeem himself by funding various carbon reduction projects with a sum equivalent to his emissions. These projects include tree planting, rainforest protection, and even mineral weathering in different corners of the world. One that I really like is Carbon 180. Based in Washington, D.C., it promotes better climate policy, tracks carbon removal legislation and overall improves the transparency and scientific integrity of climate solutions. You will receive monthly updates from the project you support to see how every coin of yours is spent. Visit their website, calculate your carbon footprint, choose a subscription plan and make a difference for this planet. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Offset your carbon footprint now. And now back to the natural sciences. If your chemistry is alive however, you enter a new science, which is called biology. Biology is not only concerned with how life is formed at the near molecular level, but also with how this life interacts with itself and the world around it. There are multiple levels of expertise in biology, from the molecular interactions of a cell, to the physiology of plants and animals, and furthermore, how populations of different species interact inside an ecosystem or the entire biosphere. Finally, the last major natural science is astronomy, which is the study of celestial things and phenomena. Its objects of interest include planets, moons, stars, nebulae, galaxies, comets, zodiac signs, and sarcasm. All these natural sciences develop into new fields of study when applied to real-life problems. Engineering uses the principles of physics to develop devices like the one you are watching this video on. From biology, we get agricultural science, vet science, medicine, and pharmacy when combined with chemistry. And for the future, Astronomy promises us applied sciences that will deal with meteor mining, deep space exploration, and, who knows, alien civilizations. Humans are very egocentric, that's why there is a whole separate branch that is devoted to the study of societies and the relationships among individuals within them, social sciences. The first one of them is anthropology, which basically means human study. It incorporates the study of humanity and human behavior as a whole. It concerns itself with human biology, human culture, human societies, linguistics, and even past human species. Then there is history, which is the study and documentation of the past. Being a social science, historians look at the past from the economic, religious, military, and diplomatic perspectives. On the other side of space-time, there is geography, devoted to the study of lands, features, inhabitants, and phenomena on Earth. People started dividing Earth into countries, so there appeared the need of sciences that would make them functional, like economics, the study of production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services, law, the study and documentation of the rules enforced in a country, political science, the field of political behavior, power and governance. And of course, there are many more other social sciences, like psychology, business studies, sociology, demography, 
for cliftics and gender studies. All of these classifications are done only for our ease of understanding them, but they can't exist isolated from one another. You can't study demography without knowing statistics, computer science without knowing maths, or politics without knowing some history and law. But that is the beauty of it. There is also beauty in stupidity, as it can be the cause of various pseudoscientific fields. These fields consist of statements and beliefs that claim to be scientific and factual, but are incompatible with the scientific method. They include astrology, alchemy, occultism, ufology, creationism, homeopathy, as well various forms of outright denial, hence why a robust educational background is paramount for a healthy cultural environment. Now I'll excuse myself as I go to engage in socially acceptable everyday activities that, unaware to us, have no scientific basis whatsoever.